I'm your host, Fatima Sissi. First off, I would like to say Happy New Year, my people. We made it to 2014. Yes. This is a time for those who feel they did not accomplish their goals in 2013 to redeem themselves. And for those who did, to surpass that and move on to doing something even greater. In case you were wondering, that was the Mama Africa Circus The Scene who performed recently at the New Victory Theater and my Zimbabwean brother, Fungai, captured it all on camera. So I would like to thank him for allowing me to share this experience with our viewers. Special guest for today is Sonali Sadiki, holistic coach and founder and director of Sustainable Wellness. Her brother, Shifa Sadiki, a Bangladeshi American, was held for three years in pretrial solitary confinement while charged under the material support statute and is currently incarcerated at the Federal Communications Management Unit in Terre Haute, Indiana. She will be talking to us about the impact this has had on her family. It's, it's, it's been a traumatic journey. Um, the first, very first few years, mm -hmm. I, 
and my family, we, we were so heartbroken. Stay tuned, viewers. We have music from the diaspora and so much more. But for now, here's a recap of the Nollywood Study Break event held at Columbia University here in New York City. And I hope you enjoy. Well, um, the event is called the Nollywood um, Study Break. And basically what we're trying to do, so that's Media Free Teak, Iroko Television, Liberated People, and the Yoruba Cultural Institute, we all partnered up to um, talk to film um, students, artists, and um, people interested in African culture about uh, filmmaking, about the art of filmmaking, about Nollywood, and about how they can contribute to the change in Nollywood films. You can see Madiba there in some like prisoner's outfit. And I was trying to talk about it, the fact that he was on um, life support. And I kind of saw that as a new type of prison. The fact that he was going through so much, he went through so much already, and now he's already he's still being tied to earth as it were. So I kind of see him like a saint. And this is just my own expression of what I think he is, because like someone said, he belongs to the age. He's not no more like with us. It should like we should just let him go. Tonight's event was an opportunity to give NYU students um, a study break, provide them with food, entertainment, um, as well as allowing different organizations to collaborate and come together um, to really talk about what we do and show the unity across all of the different organizations. I was surprised that they have a Yoruba Institute where they can teach people who don't understand the language. I was just like, wow, that's really amazing. Like, a lot of people come from Nigeria, as did the girl who did the presentation, and they lost their language along the way. So it's good to know that they're creating programs to help our fellow Nigerians learn our culture. Something I find very amazing, and I have to depict that. I can see all the sorts. This is ink and acrylic on canvas. Sorry, I didn't say that. It's called the music man. It's also called universal language, because music is a language that everybody speaks on the planet. Thank you. Well, I just think it's awesome when Africans decide to come together and have a nice event, you know? So when my friend invited me to this event and I actually read the flyer, I was like, ooh, this is actually something nice. Not no little party party, you know, people are partying too much. This is something that actually brings people together to do something nice, you know? Not necessarily for the community, but it's, it's a great thing to have Africans together, I think. Coming to this event, definitely I came for the food. Hey, of course, that jello fries was so good. But of course, I was just, I was just kidding with you. But um, the movie is really good. And I came with a bunch of friends too. So we're just coming out here to have some fun before we go out and, you know, see what this Friday night is about. I rarely attend any Nollywood or Nigerian sponsored shows. So when I do hear of one, I know how rare they are and I know how very few people attend them. I want to be there and want to be part of history, basically, mm -hmm. and be one of the very few people who get to experience this. And <laughs> not too many uh, Nigerian events like this have jollof rice like that. Okay. Not to be not to be fat or anything or hungry, but um, yeah. So that was great, and just the, like like we said, there's not so many events like that out here, and and it, that's sad. Well, I think there were a lot of people that came through. Uh, this whole place was packed, and it gives testimony to the fact that people are thirsty for this type of uh, information. They're thirsty for their for knowledge, for getting in touch with their culture, and seeing it be spread. People watched the movie tonight that they probably didn't know about the kind of quality of the content that was coming out of the continent. So I think tonight they kind of saw a glimpse of that and they saw an improving, an improving evolution in that quality. So, so now, you know, we hope that people will go out and tell other people, you know, they saw a great movie, they had a good time, they had a fun time, they met some people, some like-minded people, and they learned a little bit. I think, like, the feedback was just incredible. You know, people were so excited, they really enjoyed the film, they enjoyed the food, they enjoyed the fellowship, you know, great people, great energy. Um, and this is the type of thing that we need more so in the Nigerian community, in the African community. Um, we need to have conversations around how we can better our content, you know, we can support um, really progressive activity as opposed to just, you know, spending money at parties. <laughs> okay. The style of art is Afro Mysterics. It's something I coined and I created in 2007. Afro Mysterics simply means the mystery of the African thought pattern. It's something that has to do with ideologies, it has to do with um, themes, it has to do with mis mis um, myth. African myth and sometimes central, sometimes in the Yoruba tradition culture and also beyond that because I like to explore the themes and things that people don't talk about 
about Africa, you know, the good things, you know, our heroes like Shango and um, Yemoja and all the other Orishas that you have, you know. And I was comparing Shango to Thor to some of my friends here a couple of days ago and they were like, wow, seriously, like there's Shango and Shango is so similar to Thor and I'm like, he has the Ida, um, Thor has the hammer, you know, and I think we should bring our own like um, culture more because we, these stories are waiting to be told to an international audience, so that's what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> My question today is, who created Kwanzaa? Black people. Black people? <laughs> but it was one specific person who created it. Do you know the name? Mm-mm. Uh, who created Kwanzaa? I'm not quite sure. I think it was a white man. Who? Who? The question for today is, who created Kwanzaa? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was a spur of the moment question. I don't okay, know. So do you know much about Kwanzaa? Huh? Kwanzaa. <laughs> wow, wow, I'm not too sure who created Kwanzaa. Ooh, I forget his name, but it was like uh, not that long ago. I don't know. You know I the answer? I have no idea. I don't know the answer. Kwanzaa. Yes. Kwanzaa, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> well, Africans. Africans, I think. How many principles are there in Kwanzaa? Six. I have no idea, sorry. If you had to guess. Ten? I think uh, six. Six? Yes. What about you? One? One day? Yeah. No, you're very close. It's seven. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and my follow-up question is, how many days is Kwanzaa celebrated? Yeah, oh, I think seven. Seven. Seven? No, it's six. I was going to go for the same number. Actually, I think it's five. Seven, six, five? Which is what? Four, three, two, one, zero? <laughs> Final answer. Seven. I have no idea. Oh, it's eight. <laughs> no, it's actually seven. Oh, it is. I okay, I thought it was seven. seven. I thought it was seven. <laughs> you gave me this look like uh, I don't know about that. Uh, maybe three days, a whole month. I think it's like seven days. Mm, I'm not mistaken, about ten. All right, twelve. I'm not from here, so I'm just passing by. Okay. I don't live in New York. You're right. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a, a lucky guess, I guess. You know? This is the first time I hear about Kwanzaa. And a happy Kwanzaa, too. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa Day. <laughs> Um, I would say, I don't know, Muslims, I guess. Welcome back, viewers. I'm sitting here with um, Sanali Sadiki. She's actually the sister of um, Shifa, who's been held right now in Indiana under the implications of him being a terrorist or as somebody who provides um, materials to terrorists. So first, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Happy thank New you. Year, I Happy should say. Year. Happy 2014. Yeah. So please, tell our viewers who are watching, how did this all start, get started? How did your brother get to be in such a, a terrorist threat mm -hmm. to the United States? Well, he's actually not. <laughs> um, in fact, um, uh, let me give you a little bit more of a background uh, about 
about my family, about him. Okay. So um, my family, my parents, you know, we all immigrated here from Bangladesh back in late 1980s. Okay. And uh, we've been here actually in Atlanta. <laughs> I'm mm. just in New York. Yeah, for, I for, read for that. This, you know. grew up in but we live we live in Atlanta. You know, we grew up in Atlanta. Went through you know elementary, middle, high school over there. Um, and my little brother, you know, who's right now uh, been in prison for mm-hmm. almost uh, going on eight years. And uh, he was actually arrested when he was only about 19, you know. And uh, so he's been there for a while. And the first, very first um, three years Mm -hmm. um, from his arrest, actually three and a half years, he was in solitary confinement without a trial, which is a huge, huge, um, just a human rights violation. You know, he was really not, not... he had not created or done anything violent at all. There was no nothing violent. In fact, the uh, attorney general in Georgia at that time, when, uh-huh. they, when they took my brother away from us, said, oh, we, we have him. And then there was another young man, also Harris Ahmed, who was also taken away and arrested from mm-hmm. his family um, in Atlanta. And there were two, you know, there were two young men that were friends. And the attorney general came in TV and said, these men have done nothing violent, you know. Wow. So, so it was really, really um, uh, just surprising and scary. Like, why then are they being held in solitary confinement? So a lot of what he did in terms of sharing is he was actually sharing on the Internet, you know, mm. uh, chatting online, just like a lot of us young people do, you know, chatting online. Mm. Um, and then inte- you know, intellectually discussing um, teachings, you know, and all kinds of stuff, all kinds of information, not just uh, about Islam, you know, but they're just doing, but what it is, is that the government, um, I guess with, through informants or whatever, you know, that the government does, um, okay. you know, they were screening and surveilling okay. the internet conversations and whatnot. And because it was happening amongst young Muslim men, the government was even more, I guess, um, surveilling them even more, you know, mm. just because this is, you know, post 9 yeah. 11. And the government is saying that, you know, with uh, the whole post 9 11, mm-hmm. you know, and the Patriot Act and all these other arbitrary laws the government put in place that are completely unconstitutional, um, the government is now able to criminalize amazing spirits and inspirational spirits like my brother, you know, that are really doing nothing wrong, you know, and that is what makes it so scary for me. I'm like, wait, if, if the government can do that with him, the government can do this with anybody. You know? <laughs> so he has a way of touching people. Okay. And I think that that is the reason why the government has him and other men like him that are also prolific, that are also very inspirational, that are okay. also speaking truth to power. You know, That's why they have them in what we call in, in, in the prison system that is yeah. called the CMU, which is the communication management unit. Okay. And, and in those particular kinds of prisons, the whole purpose of it is guess what? What? To shut and hinder communication amongst the inmates mm-hmm. and then the inmates um, uh, with the, the rest of the community, the, the families, the outside community. Okay. Really, because their mind is so amazing that the government doesn't want their mind and what's in their mind to be getting over to um, the population or the community. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I understand that there was a um, panel and a lunch yesterday. Mm-hmm. So tell me about that. Oh, it was it was amazing. Um, the panel, the event was called. And actually, it's a campaign. It's yeah. a it's a greater campaign. The event last night was just a launching, and it's no separate justice. You know, basically, you know, recognizing, acknowledging that when it's when people like my brother and other men, there's so many other men that have been silenced, like my brother has been, you know, okay. that have been put away, locked away, you know, um, when people like them are being held, and like just the question I ask, like how is that mm-hmm. justice? And that that. Locking them away does not mean there's justice for us and the, the people that are outside of prison that are out, in, you know, out in public and free. That is not justice for us. 
because they are they, these are these are amazing teachers. They are scholars. They are community leaders. A lot of my brother was involved in so in a lot of um, community-based organizations in Atlanta. Okay. He was actually working with me in a women's rights organization, um, and so working to um, you know stop violence against women. You know? Wow. And he was helping you know create conferences and you know he was involved in the Islamic in the Muslim community as well, offering okay. speeches. You know, to the um, in the mosque in the masjid as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, what? It's really, it's really. I mean, if we miss. I miss. I miss him. You know, my family misses. My parents are devastated. What's got? You know, what has happened? It's funny you just mentioned your parents. I was gonna mm -hmm. ask, how has this impacted your family? It's 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 been a traumatic journey. Um, the first very first few years, mm -hmm. I and my family, we we were so. Heartbroken, and really uh, heartbroken because what's going on with our, you know, Shifa's our, our baby, and he's also <laughs> like the light of the family, you know. Um, he he did not deserve to be treated. He does not deserve to be treated the way he has been. Wow. You know? And not only that, uh, he's like a source of like imagine a source of light has been taken away from you, you know. Um, and the, and then just the missing of that. I feel like I would have to invite you again for another sit down so we can get more in depth with that. Um, but for people watching at home, how can they get involved into this new campaign? Okay, so um, I think the, there's a website for this campaign. Of it's course. a no. Um, That's the flyer. Okay, great, yeah. So it's no-separate-justice.org. So you can visit their website. There's a lot of conversations happening. There, there's also tweeting going on uh, about the event from last night, so you'll get a great sense of what was happening last night. I don't think we'll ever, you know, ever be, ever be fixed unless he's at home, back with us. Wow, you're making you know? me a little <laughs> teary. <laughs> you're making um, me too. No. <laughs> Having me talk about this. <laughs> but, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry to yeah, hear that. Yeah. But, um, but what does your yeah. family want the world to know? Well, first of all, we feel betrayed by our government. Okay. You know, um, I think that our government has done a great job of using mass media to hypnotize the population wow. in a very, very um, insidious way. Um, and it's really not doing justice to the population. It's not doing justice to us. And it's what it's doing is it's using our taxpayers' money on purposes, on people like my brother, who, <laughs> you know, you you know, government is using our tax money to capture. You know, he was actually extradited from Bangladesh because he was actually there with my father for a mom, uh, for a moment, oh, and wow. he had just gotten married, um, and he was actually kidnapped, and then the government yes, had, government um, brought him to the U.S. And I mean, our money is going to do something like that when it could be going to really like healthcare. I mean, this country we're needing so much support with health and wellness and prevention, you know, when it could be going on education for children, where it can be going to other communities um, that have been marginalized and that money can be used for that. I mean, really, we have so many other real problems that, that we can, the government can be using their resources on, but they're using it on, on, on people like my brother and other Muslim men that are completely model citizens, if anything. They're, they're future leaders, you know, and I think the government is afraid, you know, that that certain um, that Islamic you know certain Islamic you know inspirational light okay. spirits will rise up to become amazing leaders, and the government doesn't want that. When our loved one gets pulled and imprisoned like this, there's so much resource um, that is taken, um, and and so much resource that is needed to sustain. Because a lot of these that are, are either fathers mm -hmm. or their husbands that were supporting the family. But now that they've been taken away, now the mothers or the daughters, you know, they're just kind of left. So what do they do? You know, there's not a, enough support system. And so we need funding, you know, we need support. So we, okay. there's always funding needed to support these families. Um, write letters to our brothers, to our uncles. Um, and, uh, you know, we say, you know, go to the website and you'll see where you can send the letters. You know, okay. let them know that you you are uh, there, you know, you're there for them and you get how, um, you know, justice is not serving them. 
you know, and it helps them to know, um, to see that there's support out there, you know, it helps them to just continue they to sure sustain themselves. You yeah. know? Um, so things like that will really help. And then also start speaking truth, you know, like this is, this is, you know, what's going on is just a distraction. It's, a, you know, the Muslim community has become a, the new scapegoat. You know, this is not new. What's happening to the Muslim community mm -hmm. is not new. Mm -hmm. You know, this has happened to the African American communities, you know, um, freedom fighters in general. I mean, we've you know? all I mean, gone through and it. it's always been so. some sort of a color uh, community of color that has been used as a scapegoat to really um, to criminalize, you know, and really when there's that's not the real issue here, you know. <laughs> and so yeah. So I want to yeah. thank you for joining yes, me today, and we thank will you. keep in touch thank to know more me. about the case on your brother. Thank you. So thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. So stay tuned, viewers. Next is Sight and Sin from the Apollo Theater from Matt Devine Linus. Yes, yes, this is your boy Matt Violinist here at the world famous legendary Apollo. Well, now, unfortunately, I didn't come out on top, but I did really well. So, as you can see, I left my mark here, and I plan to make a lot more moves in the future, so look out for your boy, all right? Each year they have a big audition, and they, like, you know, it's advertised on the internet and everything, and literally the line will be from here all the way down the block wrapped around. So, there was about 300 contestants. And luckily, I was one of, the, one of the ones that made it onto the show. And I'm even more lucky because I actually made it to the Super Top Dog competition. Um, what inspired me to play like all of these different varieties of music was um, definitely Black Violin and Mary Ben Ari. These are like the gods and goddesses of like hip-hop violin. You know, they paved the way for, for people like me. So that's how I got my start. And now I'm doing what they're doing. Just in my own kind of twist, my own kind of funk. Madison Square Garden, oh man, that was a different experience as well. Um, I was expecting the crowd to be like like real rowdy, having a lot of fun. One, the Knicks were down at, during that first quarter, and two, the crowd is just kind of mellowed out and chill. They, they're reserved, they're definitely a reserved crowd, nothing like the Apollo Theater. But what was the reception like? Matthew, I love you! Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Performing at the Apollo Theater is always an exciting experience, you know. There's always different varieties of people, um, people like different kinds of music, and you know it's always exciting that I can play each each and every kind of music. So, yeah, it's fun. It's always a fun, exciting experience. Thank you for watching the show today. I hope the New Year's bring joy into all your hearts. And as usual, be sure to like us on different social media platforms. Also, for inquiries about having your adverts on the show, please contact us at sradverts at sahararreporters.com. Hope you enjoyed and see you next time as we uncover more stories from the diaspora. Goodbye.